Art is, is the soul of a nation. Artists are the specialists who are able to translate some of society's desires. They make life beautiful. They express the soul of the Filipino in, in, this, in his art. Basta kami ay living at peace with the world. Anong mga kapinatod talaga? We are learning from you something that even books cannot teach. Gifted lang ako siguro. Binata pa ako. Uh, meron ako na gusto ng babae. Tinitignan ko yung retrato niya. Eh, hindi na ako makatulog. Nakawa ko yung retrato niya. Halos magdamag ang hawa ko. Eh. Na, naisip ko yung melody. La ra ri ra ri ra la ra Tagalog. La na na ra ra ri la ra Yung babae, from Baliwag. Ang pangalan, Laling. Siya buong magdamag, laling dami. Hawak ko ang larawan mo. Halos ako ay mabaliw dahil sa pag-ibig sa'yo. Natambak ang mga melody, walang letra. Ay, nag-stay na ako sa lyric writing. Hanggang alas dos ng daling araw, ako'y tumutugtong sa kabalit. Ha? Kaya ako minsan ay yung walking grade 6. Kumukuha ako ng music sa aking isang, isang maestra. No? Eh, kinagagalitan ako palagay niyang gawa ng I was always very sleepy. Yung mga kabatang bata ako naman. Ha? Kung ikaw umuwi sa bahay alas dos, alas tres ng daling araw, eh, hindi ka maniniwala. Ako'y nakakuha ng 45 na grade sa music ng panahon yun. I saw a Russian ballet dancer and I fell in love with the dance. My papa promised me that if I should finish as valedictorian in high school, he would send me to Manila to study ballet. That, and I finished valedictorian and he kept his promise. I came to Manila and I started taking ballet. I really didn't choose sculpture you know, and that it just had a way of uh, appearing and coming into my life. It started uh, one day while I was watching television. I saw this potter demonstrate his craft. You know, and he was working on a pot on a, a potter's wheel and I was completely fascinated. Now, the next day I went out to buy a bag of clay and instinctively I mixed it with water and started kneading and I was on my way. I did my first uh, piece of work that day. I am Kidlat Tahimik. I stayed five years as an economist at an international economics research organization. While I was doing this, parang outwardly I was carrying on as an economist in my three-piece suit. You can imagine me in a three-piece suit without this colorful hat. Talagang pan lang gray, as, as most businessmen can look like. I did that for five years. Pero sa loob, sa loob ko, may, may nagre-rebelde, parang nakakulong. Most of my friends at that time were artists. Eventually, I decided to go to Germany to try to make a little money as a sidewalk vendor sa Munich Olympic Games. That's where I met my wife, who she was a complete hippie. 
and but she was an artist and she allowed the artist in me to come out or the kid Latahimik in me to come out of Eric de Guillen. Ay di nagmaliw ang dati kong araw ng munti pang bata sa piling ni nana. Eight ako ngayon. Hindi ko na matagal eh. Mahirap na alalahanin yung mga nakaraan eh. Nang yung poem ko nung ako, Perez Gret, Fly, fly to the mango tree. Fly to your pretty little nest in the eggs, one, two, three. Pretty little yellow bird. High up in the tree. Sing a song about your nest. Sing a song to me. Kaya yung mga poem ko nung ako nasa elementary. May pumukul sa pitit sa sangan ng isang kahoy At nahagit ng bato ang pagpak ng munting ibon Dahil sa sakit... Ang gandang gumawa ng letra si Batuti. Ang, ang una kong pag-ibig, ito yung marikit. Ang gawa ni Batuti yan, madaling araw, ang bayang ko. Kaya gumanda yung ambayan ko dahil sa letra. Eh hindi na babanggit ko minsan yung pangalan ni Batute. Ako nagsasabi, nagpapaalala siya, nagpapablish. Ilagay niyo ang gumawa ng lyrics niyan. Si Jose Corazon de Jesus. Dahil simple, simple yung music. Nilagyan niya ng Ibon mang may layang lumipad Kulungin mo at umiiyaw Bayan pa kayang sakdal dilag Ang di magnasang Maka Alpas. The province, I notice when the wind blows through the leaves, there was beautiful sound. Yeah. So I discovered these leaves are also Musical instrument created by the creator of all things. Para sa, para sa mga poor musicians who could not afford to buy a clarinet, a trumpet, a saxophone, ma, mga mahal yun eh. Eh ako daw, pipitas lang. <laughs> Ito ang tugtag ko na ganun. Nung naibenta ko yung aking biyuli, yung gyera na eh. Takot kami dumaan sa Bulacan, baka masalubog namin ng hapon. Lumigit kami sa Arayat Mountain. Oh, layo, ano? Andun pala ang mga hapon, pati mga sundalo. Naku, napagbinta nga kami, grilla, grilla! Nakatutok na yung bayonet, eh. Kako, no, musician. Pinatunayan ko, kumuha ko ng dahon, maraming dahon. Pinagtok ko yung Japanese music. Sinano yoro, lalalalal. Kumakanta pa yung soldiers. Alam nila ang letra, Mi yamma no akane, sumaye, lan la di dan la di da da dan dan. Binaba na yung bayoneta nung commander, sabi ko na, okay, okay, go. Ayun, yung kasama ko ang putla, sa takot. Nung nakaraan na kami, doon ako ng mutla naman. Ang 
kanang talagang meaning ng lirik. At kung yan man ay kasalanan, ay sapakat kami ay tao lamang. Kahit konting liwanag ng pag-ibig, ang ikaw... Kaya ako pinupuri kayo ang mga artista sa pelikula at sa show business. Nauri nyo! At saka masyado ako natutuwa. Nasali ko sa urian. Kaya pinagmamalaki ko ito. Mga lyrics, kung gawin ko, kumisan, 15 minutes, tapos. Eh, isang po yan, natatapos ko sa maghapon. Ang dami nagpapagawa. Ikaw lamang ang aking hindi magpakailanman. Yung ginawa kong kanta sa loob ng 20 minutes, 20 years na. Bago pa lagi, ikaw lamang ang aking ibigin. Tuwing kasal, kinakanta ni Kwan. <laughs> ni, yung mga Kwan, sila Dulce. Naglalagay siya ng piso doon sa Arkansya para daw doon sa kay Levy, si Larry yan. Ay kasalan, ay sa pagkakami. Sabi sa akin ni Duray Valencia bago namatay, yung piracy niya, they are more organized than you. Waray, waray, hindi tatakas. Mga magagaling sila dyan. Mura pinagbibili, ha? Mga kanta ko. Ha, ah, pinagbibili. Manigas, waray, waray. Mayroong court case, ayoko. Sa akon, sa bakbakan, diri mag... Pagdadaya, ganun. Eh, wala tayong magagawa nun. Sabi ko, kaya ako hindi nagde-demanda, eh, ano ba? Pera lang yan. Ikaw ko nga, you lose nothing when you lose money. Nabasa ko yun, isang saying ng mga marurunong yan. Kaya ang artist dito, hindi well paid. Eh. Mabuti na nga ngayon, umi-improve na. Meron na nabasa ko, nakalagay, the power of music. Nagandaan ako, kaya natandaan ko tuloy. In the hour of uh, hard work, music will give you power. In the hour of, of uh, friendship, music will bring uh, understanding. And in the hour of love, music brings more romance. Maraming salamat po. At tuntua ko, eh, very late na nga eh. Kamunting na naging posto mo siya. Eh. Malapit na abutan na kamatayan eh. Sapagat bibigyan lang ikaw ng pera ng national artist, tax free. Kung may life, hanggang may buhay ka, ganun. Kung wala na, wala na. Kung pula pa ako naman ang bahay, ang, 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 ang uh, nasa puso ng tao eh. Malungkot na malungkot, katapos may kapalit na masaya-masaya naman yan. Eh. Kung nadidinig ko yung mga gawa ko, tonto ako. Oh, yun, na, na, nagagawa kong tema yun. Meron akong ginawang tema, ang, ang kahulugan eh. Parang maghapon lamang ang title. Ang buhay natin, maiksi-maiksi, sabi ko. Parang maghapon lamang. So, oh, ang buhay ay parang maghapon lang pala. Tila isang saglit ang humingit ng umaga kung bata ka pa. Pagdat, pagsapit ng hapon, ay kay lungkot ng puso kong nagdurusa. Kung katotohanan ay ganyan, bakit sinayang ko yung unang sigla ng aking buhay na di na magbabalik kahit na kailanman o oh, ang buhay pala? 
ay parang maghapon lamang. Make clear! <laughs> Sige, okay? There are ten members of the League of Filipino Composers. Ask them to define what is Filipino music, and we have ten definitions of what Filipino music is. We cannot be the same. Talagang yung bibi lang tayo pero pura pamilya. No kaya yun pa ba? Kaya yan lahat ng yan, ipinagdaan ako ng yan. Eh yan ay ako'y tumutugtog kumisa sa kabarit yan. Tumutugtog ako sa mga nightclubs o ganyan. Just to earn a few pesos for my schooling. Full scholar ako sa UP. Because of my grades, puro one, 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 one yan. One minus, gano'n. Kaya doon ako nagkaroon ng scholarship sa ano. At yun na nga, naging patuloy na yan hanggang sa ako nga mag-graduate na yan sa konservatorio. Taong 1935, nag-appoint si Presidente Bacobo ng mga bubuo ng kumiti para maglibot sa buong Pilipinas at to gather folk songs and uh, folk tunes and uh, costumes of the different natives for preservation. At iyan ang naging simula ng paglikha ng mga estudyante nun sa composition na gumamit ng mga folk songs. Ha? Para ikaw nga ay to be folkloric. Para ikaw nga ay ma-develop ma natin ang ating mga folk songs na yan. Filipino folk songs. Uh, too literal ang paggamit namin ng folk songs. Ako, isa mismo. Ang aking paggamit ng mga composition sa aking composition, ha? ng folk, folk songs na yan. Eh, talagang too literal. Ibig sabihin ay walang development. Basta, bahay kubo, kung bahay kubo, kung laro-laro sinta, laro sinta, in its entirety. Kaya yun, eh, para bang walang creativity. Basta ikaw nga, eh, ginagamit mo yung focus na, eh, naroon na yun, eh. Manang biday, hilukas mo man, sa pintana, ikalong babang, sa kitaem, may kinayawang, Nung ako ay ngayon ay magpunta ngayon sa Juilliard School of Music, ang komposisyon yung i-assign sa iyo na yung professor doon sa Juilliard ay yung talagang mga high, ano, matataas na. Ipinakita ko sa kanya yung ginagawa natin sa Maynila na folk song ang, ang thematic idea. Eh ang sabi sa akin, is that yours? That's not your composition. That is the composition of your forefathers. I was taught that in Juilliard, you do not have to use the folk songs in, your, in its entirety. They bear that one measure only in two measures, and that will be yours. Doon ako nabuo. Kaya ang, ang kabuuan niyan ay ang aking lahing kayo mangi. I want to recreate the Filipino atmosphere, yung ating, yung ating folk songs na inib para ma-develop natin. Ang kahalagahan ng aking filosofi yung iyan, ha? naglalarawan niya ng diwa na isang Pilipino na it cannot be any other countries. Ha? The atmosphere must be Pilipino. The idea must be Pilipino. To project our nationalism. And every time that I compose, ha? eh, sasabi ko sa iyo na talagang lumalabas yan. Sa aking filosofi yan, ang composition kinakalang ma maintindihan ng tao, a music that is not appreciated, failure. Kaya ako napunta sa Cultural Center para ako ma-appreciate, para maintindihan ko. Pagkat ang importante sa mga kabataan ay yung appreciation. If there is no appreciation, wala, talaga masisira tayo.
Alam ko na ang karangal ang iginawad sa akin ay hindi siyang huling hantungan ng aking pagkamanlilikha. Bagkos, sisikapin kong pangatawanan ang responsibilidad na kaagapay ng pamagat na artista ng bayan. Alam ko na ang marami pang mabibigat at malalaking gawain ang nakaantay sa akin. Hanggat may mga tunog na dumadaloy sa aking hinagap. Hanggat may aliw-iw na sumisipol sa aking isipan. Hanggat may isang makapangyarihan tinig na nagsasabing ako ay sumulat at lumikha ng musika. Hanggat may pagdiriwang sa bayan at bansang nangangailangan ng awitin at tugtugin. Hanggat ako ay may lakas ng katawan at isipan. Hindi ako mag-aatubili na tumugon sa mga pangangailangan ito. Maraming salamat. I was in Kuala Lumpur when I was nominated. I was in Kuala Lumpur. Kaya sinabi na lang sa akin ito ni Hila na, Oy, ikaw ang napiliin ngayon. Kaya ako sa lagay ko, wala na mapipiliin. Kaya ako na lang napiliin. It's only a joke. It's only a joke. Kaya 1991, nang aking maging national artist. But prior to that, one year before that, ASEAN awarded ako sa Singapore. Alam ninyo yung mga serious composers, ha? Kapag iligawa ng isang obra pestra, o isang, isang tutuwin, simple or big words, ha? hindi gumagawa yan ng just to pretend. Ang diwa ng isang serious composer ay talagang kung ano yung nilalaman nung gusto mo ilarawan, yun ang talagang nalabas yan. Kaya kami eh, hindi kami basta gumagawa ng mga composition na just for that, just for that. Yung bang pasapasa lang yan, baliwala na yan. Pero no, a serious composer must think twice before he write something. Walang mayamang composer. Ang mayaman nga alam mo dyan, yung nalalama ko sa history of music, ha, is si Felix Bendelson, na anak ng isang, hang, isang banker na Jew. Sa pano ito, marami na, marami na siguro. Mga Amerikano, marami na. If you are a conductor of a big, a major symphony orchestra in America, you'll be living here. At is. Pero sa atin dito, kami mga composers na yan, ewan ko kung ano yung, ano yung, ano yung, kung saan kami nari yung scale, kung saan kami nari yan. Ito, pinakamataas ito, hindi namin nalala namin yan. Uh, basta kami ay living at peace with the world. Basta ito lang masasabi ko, that is the description na I can give you. We composers in the Philippines are living within at peace with the world. I'm doing now, you know, I, I'm very conscious of the, the relationship or the conflict between nature and grace, for instance, between life and death, death and resurrection. 
I, I felt that I had always been an artist now. I mean, I, I kept saying that. Uh, even as a child, I knew that unless I was creating, um, you're not living life to the full. When I was a young mother, um, I, I got sick. You know, and I, I was very disturbed, I was unhappy, and I thought I was going on a, on, um, a breakdown, and I was desperate. And I think that was the time when I said, um, I think art is going to change my life. So I thought I'd um, save myself through art. That was one of the turning points you know, that led me to uh, the decision to become an artist. I became better, I became happier, I felt more liberated and I was able to express myself. I'm very fortunate and I thank Providence that it's, it's clay and not any other medium. You know. um, I felt a um, very personal attachment to clay. It's a very wonderful medium. You know. uh, it's in, in many ways, it's very feminine. It's very soft and pliable, and it's um, obedient and very, very pleasurable to work with, you know, almost therapeutic. You know. I think feminism provided um, the context and the, the angle of a refraction from which I viewed life and society. I think um, it sort of I drew me out of the, the confines of home and into the, uh, the larger context of, uh, of life. Feminist art is an art of persuasion, so you have an agenda to, to make, no? A feminist artist, I think, wants uh, reforms. You know, she, she clamors for equality and justice and um, a better quality of life for women, not only for women, but men and children also. In other words, a feminist artist um, wants to change the world. It was a painful um, transition that I thought it um, it brought me out into the streets you know, and into um, a larger and a noisier and more public kind of art making. You know. I thought I became involved with what was going on in society. Art should be uh, used to serve not selfish purposes, you know, but for a, for a higher um, purpose, you know, like, um, like the call of the nation. Art is very spiritual. Art is very close. It's, it's a very powerful impulse uh, because it's very close to divinity. It's closest to divinity. You know? I think art is the closest thing that you can get to God. So right now, um, it, it, that's where I am at. You know? I'd say I'm a Christian artist. Like I was a feminist artist, now I'm a Christian artist. I'm still a feminist, but it's not enough. My works are very autobiographical. High Sea and Deluge was, um, was a, a late work, you know? and um, uh, there was a series of work along this line you know, with this kind of theme. I was quite unhappy. I was reeling from, um, from a failed marriage and um, 
So the, these were images of death and dying and annihilation. And I, I thought um, I would finish up this woman, you know, this clear, clear woman. She was perishing and she was dying. And I thought I'd finally finish her off. In 1992, I did a work that I called Doxology, where the woman is really dead. You know? I killed her off. You know? Maybe just to show myself that in order to really live, you have to know how to die. The value of art cannot be um, overrated. You know? I, I believe it has to be taught early you know, in schools. All my daughters are artists. You know? Pag mulat na mulat ka sa mundo eh, nakikita ko na pipintay yung tatay ko, yung nanay ko, gumagawa ng sculpture, tapos yung mga kapatid ko, nagdo-drawing yung sasahig. Nung bata kami, sinasama nila kami sa mga museums, sa mga libraries, tapos na nakakapanood kami ng mga pelikula, mga Kurosawa, mga Charlie Chaplin. Tapos ayon, uh, and then, Hindi ko na-realize na I was going into filmmaking until when I graduated na ako high school. Sari and I, we have the same faith na, and the same goals for, for art. So ngayon, nasa punto ako na lumalabas ako sa pagiging personal at pumapasok na ako dun sa yung gusto mong uh, ma-enlighten o magkaroon ng new consciousness sa mga tao. I am very happy that uh, we've come to a point where we are able to work together in equal capacity as artists. And I think that it's a privilege and um, pure, pure fun. Hindi nagkakalayo lagi yung trabaho namin. Like, yung gumawa siya ng sculptures about the praying women and pero naka-revolutionary, ano, mga katipunera siguro. Tapos at the same time naman, nung time na yun, gumagawa naman ako ng documentary about the participation of the women sa katip sa revolution. So parang hindi mo hindi naghihiwalay. Si Mami yung siya rin siguro yung one influence sa spirituality ko ngayon na parang nagpa-parallel pa rin yung mga works namin na in terms of theme, no, in tema ng pagiging spiritual. All great works of art are products of great intensity and great passion. I've always told Sari to, to keep uh, the passion going. Without it, you, you can't make great art. Passion is the stuff that all great art is made of. I'd like to leave my work as legacy to, to the future artists because it's what that lives on. Now your work outlives you. you know, the artist is only an instrument. At the end of the day, in the long run, the artwork is greater than the artist himself. His name is Fernando Goya, a very famous painter in Spain. He, uh, he called his series of paintings, Go he was Goya, he called them Goyescas. So I patterned it after that, I called not Philippine paintings in dance, Filipinescas. We were able to go on seven international tours and uh, modesty aside, we got terrific raves. We could have gone on forever performing, I think, in Europe because uh, we won the grand prize. We had offers right and left. 
When we left, we had absolutely no help from the government. I had to raise the funds in utang ko, in utang ng asawa ko. He, you know, he sold this uh, share in the Manila Golf Club, which is now worth 26 million pesos and nobody's selling. The honor goes to the country, but the, the losses, the deficits uh, were mine, <laughs> personally, and my husband's, of course. I noticed that most of the dancers were um, mga dying swan, mga kung ano ano ba, foreign, foreign lahat ng mga subjects. That, because all we had were folk dancers lang. Sortido, Cariñosa, mga ganyan, ganyan. So I started experimenting to have dance drama, dance for the stage, dance for theater, na uh, may story, may narrative. Pakonti-konti, pakonti-konti, nagawa ko yun. I was the pioneer, also in Asian styles. My first really big uh, success was in Maria Clara and the Leper. <coughs> Ganun naman po tayo eh, invento ng invento. <laughs> Ganun naman talaga ang gumagawa ng bago. And we eh, invent ka ng something, if possible, which has never been done before. I'm the very first one to have choreographed the legends of the creation. The legend, the sea and the sky, they were always quarreling. The sea was hurling thunder, uh, lightning and thunderbolts at the, at the sea, and the sea was hurling giant waves at the sky. There was a bird always flying between them. He was, of course, very, very tired. <laughs> Leonor Orosa Gokinko, artista ng bayan para sa sayaw. We have become very aware of dance. The public has become very aware of dance. Kanya lang production costs are so high, kung misan matataas ka ang sinisingil sa ticket, hindi naman makapunta lahat ng tao. Filipinos are so talented. Number one, we could always be number one. Kulang lang sa suporta, kulang sa fondos. Uh, I had to do, to do my own costumes, my spend for everything, and uh, spend for the music, spend for the musicians, spend for the props, spend for travel deficits, everything. Sometimes, kulang sa disiplina at sa tiyaga. Pero kung sa dating sa talent, sa music at sa dance, pero, at saka sa visual arts, they're very, very talented. Filipinos are extraordinarily talented. At kailangan tulong talaga. The, both the government and the private sector should help dance, the dancers, Filipino dancers, dahil napaka, they're so talented, sayang na sayang. All that talent, misan di na di-develop properly. Eh, lalo kung mahirap ka, hindi ka naman lahat babae ka. Merong dancer na soloist dito eh, nasa Tokyo ngayon eh, janitor. Dahil mas malaki pang kinikita niya as janitor in Tokyo than in, as a soloist in a Philippine Ballet Company. I 
continued teaching ballet for over 50 years. encouraged uh, creativity among Philippine, Philipp, young Filipinos. And uh, what does it mean to me? Well, it means uh, recognition of um, my having blazed a trail and having pioneered in the production of uh, theater dance. do it for future recognition. You do it because you're impelled to do it. You feel you have to do it. God gave you the talent. You want to use that talent in His service. Everything I have done, I hope, has been for the glory of God. And I must say, I could never have done this without God's blessing. Wala, bata pa ako. The peers were telling me, Ay, mag-MBA ka, kailangan ng bayan ng mga economists. Mga artists lang, hindi, hindi kailangan ng bayan. And somehow, <laughs> nakinig ako dun sa unsolicited advice na yun. So, I, ambisyosa pa rin ako noon. I, I decided to take an MBA. Because I thought I was a presidential After five years, I, uh, I realized that I was not really cut out to be an economist. So um, I tore up my diploma. Then I got crumbled in walls of Eric De Gea, the ambitious presidential ball. I am Kidlat, I am Kidlat Tahimi. With this confidence, I started to do my first film, Mababangong Bangungot. My main purpose was Siguro to exercise the colonial vibrations of, of Eric de Guillen. And by doing it, I called the character in the film Kidlat Tahimik. And I finished the film. And because of its primitive juices, its primitive ingredients. It was successful. I mean, I'm not talking about money-wise, but it was a successful film, um, critically. Come, Kitlet. Meet my friends. Big personalities you hear on your little radio in the Philippines. It gave me confidence, not because, oi, they're applauding Eric De Gea, a new cinematic genius. No, but it gave me a confidence. Na, I call it the Indio genius. Na, because Indio is what the foreigners, the colonizers called the colonized. You Indios, it was a very derogatory term. But that in spite of being colonized, there is a certain genius of the race that stays there. 
Maybe because I had to deal with the colonial contradictions in myself. Parang bumukas na rin yung yung kukun na kalabas si Kidlat Tahibik. But I had also called my firstborn son Kidlat. Akong Kidlat Jr. Yung anak ko. Siyang original Kidlat. Siyang Kidlat Sr. Culture is not supposed to remain stagnant. And I'm the last person who would say I'm going to Hapao because I'm going to preserve. I want to help preserve Ifugao culture like a museum piece. And I'm the last who would say that. I'm an extreme. I, I tell my students, I'm doing something and maybe if it's worth looking at it only to understand why I'm an alternative to mainstream filmmaking. But I'm an extreme. You don't have to do it the way I do. I also do it by being a one-man band. I'm the actor, director, film uh, editor. Lahat na. I'm the one carrying the film to the... I'm the projectionist pa. Maybe I'm blessed that I have a rich mother. So I'm not pushed against the wall. I'm not forced to make films so that I can feed my kids. So because of that, I have a little luxury of refusing the formula. I have a luxury of refusing to join the mainstream. Kidlat uh, Tahimik is a tatay and a filmmaker in that order. When I say Tata Egmona, it's not only to my direct offspring. It's a commitment to the next generation. So. I think in that sense, na, you are part of a greater community, my obligation, my social obligation. Ka. So I know I will not do a massacre film. I will not make a film that will glorify guns. I do not make a film that emphasizes sex just for the sake of sex. I'm not approved na walang sex, walang violence sa mundo na ito, but if it's the only thing you will emphasize in a film so that you can make a ton of money, and never mind the consequence sa kabataan, never mind the consequence sa kultura, never mind the consequence sa future generations, sa future seven generations, Wow, that's a heavy price. It's really a best friend. I am deeply influenced by my father's thoughts and and trying to internalize that. Uh, uh, well, the whole uh, the whole thing is scary. My body is white, but my soul is. Pinoy. For me, uh, I wanted to contribute something to uh, this whole year with the centennial and uh, freedom. So I got this from the Passion and Revolution. These are, I, had, I uh, added some symbols with their, with their prayers. Di mo kilala, ako ang pinanggalingan ng loob na maganda at mapuri. Dahil sa akin, katauhan ay nagkaisa, nalimot ang pang sariling damot. Nakita ang magandang lob sa kapwa tao. Ang pangalan ko ay Kalea. As a child artist, like Kawayan, as a budding uh, painter, sculptor, I think just leaving those things, not necessarily as pearls of wisdom, but just leaving it as food for thought might uh, 
balance yung output nila later on. So, when I say to my kid, to the student kids at Ateneo and in the UP, the only thing you have to remember at the end of the semester is I am a tatay and a filmmaker in that order. And then I can give you a flat one. <laughs> Happy now with that. Sana'y di nagmaliw ang dati kong araw ng munti pang bata sa piling ni nanay. Ako, bilang isang Pilipino, ay magkinakailang maglarawan ako ng diwang Pilipino, not anything else. Art must be, be excellent no? and it must uh, say something um, about life. No? It must edify and give you um, a greater insight into what life really is. Kami, ito na yung panahon namin. At ang artist is responsible to describe his own particular time. There's a saying sometimes that to become a good artist, you have to suffer. I think that's more in terms of, maybe it's more talking about an inner suffering to, to transcend a, a kind of an inner um, anguish and, and, and surviving it so that you can uh, appreciate your human strength. Right? Oh, 